Just leave on blue, clear, take off, your left hand. Take off, left, with the sweet one. Left hand, swing west, copy. Hello and welcome to the Blue Skies Podcast. I'm PR Ganapati, your host. It's my great pleasure today to bring back another old guest and, uh, you know, amateur aviation historian of the Indian Air Force, Jagan. Uh, And today we're going to speak about an incident which was hinted at in one of our earliest interviews, which is the incident involving uh, A.B. Devaya, the incident where Devaya uh, went missing and um, was later found to have been shot down. And so uh, we're going to peel the layers of the onion with Jagan. Welcome back to the program, Jagan. Hey, Gans. Thank you for that welcome. And I'm glad to be uh... Uh, back again on your podcast and I look forward to uh, uh, looking into this particular uh, 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 story uh, in detail uh, for our uh, for our listeners. As we do with every episode, uh, we like to get to know our guest and our guest today is A.B. Devaya. So uh, let's listen to some people who served with him and hear what they have to say. We start with uh, Air Marshal B.D. Jayal who served with uh, Devaya in one squadron in the 50s and early 60s. So, you know, in the squadron, he was popularly known as Tubby. Yeah. Because he was short, stocky. But as a person on the ground, I always recollect Tubby to be very shy, very modest, and had a great sense of humor and was a good hockey player, by the way. Hmm? Uh But he would rarely speak. He was very shy, except when you were all sitting together and having a drink, because then Tubby's sense of humor would come out and he would be a different person. <laughs> so so that was Tubby as a, as a friend and as a colleague in, in Tufani's and Mr's when we were together. In the air, Tubby, I think, is one of the few people that I can say, as as squadron mates, he was a born flyer because once he was in the cockpit, Mm. I think, you know, he was just supremely confident as if he'd been brought up, you know, brought up in that cockpit. Mm. He would always excel in his armament scores. So whenever we did gunnery or rocketry or bombing, Tubbing scores, and he he would be very modest and, you know, uh, he wouldn't boast about anything. Right. Uh, so he was extremely confident in the air, and you're right, if if you ever did a practice combat with him or something, you are sure to lose, because Tabi is not going to give up. <laughs> it, was, it was as simple as that, you see. That's right. <laughs> And and, 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 and and I think in the squadron, even in flying, sometimes just, um, I think he was um, sort of showed signs of being, if anything, a little overconfident. Mm. You know? He was mm. so confident of his ability in the cockpit that it was really um, amazing to us. We Commander Arun Dogra, uh, VRC, also served with Tabi Devaya and was a few courses senior to him. Here are his uh, recollections. Uh, as far as I, I remember, he was a very good flyer, and uh, he mostly kept himself uh, aloof, you know. Then I, when I left the squadron, mm-hmm. then we met in uh, Jodhpur. Mm-hmm. He came as an instructor, right, and he was newly married, mm. 
and uh, same thing uh, he was yeah. a very simple simple person he just flew and minded his own business mm-hmm. and uh, i can at least say that he was a good friend of mine mm. and we were very friendly mm. he was in our group you know godfrey right, sellens right. myself mm. right right devaya mm. and uh, but i don't know how devaya was quite close to me in a way you know mm. we used to go to picture together i had a car mm. and uh, uh, he was quite uh, we were quite uh, friendly mm. uh, but there is no doubt that devaya was a very good flyer mm. excellent flyer and and uh, and he didn't believe in any uh, any 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 groupism or mm. he just minded his own business right and 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 a very good soul very helpful mm. and uh, you know he was a good man very mm. good very good hearted got it helpful there is there is nothing much in 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 a, in a, in, a, in a normal squadron you got up in the morning you went for flying those days we used to go on cycles mm. went for flying came back to your room evening uh, you went for games dinner mm. and back mm. that was all or sundays or uh, some other weekdays we went for a picture mm. it was not like uh, present days where there is so so much of socializing mm. television internet and everything everything and uh, people came around to your room on sundays sat down we chit chatted got mm. and talked about flying that is all we did not right. much <laughs> yeah so he was it. a wonderful person mm. absolutely harmless mm. just kept to himself <laughs> and I, i i remember the day you know uh, this uh, this happened in 65 isn't it 7 september 65 yeah 65 and uh, we had all come from uh, different places mm-hmm. uh, to adampur mm. you know we were, in, we were all instructors yes and uh, we were asked to join uh, uh, squadrons mm. earlier squadrons so we we came and uh, i had a friend there mm. who was uh, ground due to his officer he was an ex pilot but he, he was grounded so i was staying with him mm. whereas the uh, rest of the pilots they had one very big uh, hall and mm. they were kept there mm-hmm. you know those days you can't imagine how bad things were right. but we only uh, loved flying mm. so we didn't uh, sort of uh, bother about small things yeah the, the, the were 10 12 people were put in a hall mm. they all used to be sleeping on a ch- charpai mm. and uh, uh, i remember uh, he was attached to different squadron one squadron one squadron mm. i was attached to eight squadron uh-huh. and and i remember him uh, you know they were just close to each other we all used to walk mm. not like these days transports and mm. jeeps and everything we all used to walk mm. he was walking to the aircraft and i was walking to the thing i saw him mm. i waved at him mm. and then later on we came to know that he didn't return right i saw him going you know let's go back to air marshal philip rajkumar's interview and listen to him describe uh, how devaya got air bond just ahead of uh, him uh, air marshal rajkumar baks uh, sarboda was one of the biggest air bases in pakistan uh, it had um, two or three sabre squadrons based there at that time in 1965 the two big bases were mauripur and karachi where the b57 bombers were based and the sabers were uh, three squadrons were there at sargoda and were supposed to be very heavily defended and it also had a radar unit uh, on the hills close by so it was a very important base for them and uh, having lost so many airplanes uh, the previous evening probably the ai leadership felt that we should give a fitting response so one squadron 12 aircraft went to sargoda but uh, now this takeoff was in the dark at uh, 
5.30 a.m. And uh, the funny thing was, this was my third takeoff at night. I told you I had flown only two sorties. Now, this time I was getting airborne in the dark with 2,000 pounders, full fuel and full gun ammunition. Very heavy, heavyweight configuration. And um, then we had 12 aircraft and two standbys. You know, two standbys are supposed to start up and wait on the operational readiness platform. And if anybody dropped out, they were supposed to come in. Nobody had dropped out, but just as I was about to roll, one of the uh, standby aircraft squad leader, Devaya, I didn't know who it was at that, that time, but later on came to know. He just entered the runway in front of me and uh, in front of my deputy leader and myself and started rolling. Now, I told you the previous evening, the park aircraft had dropped a bomb and had thrown a lot of earth and uh, pieces of uh, shrapnel on the runway. There was no time to clean the, uh, sweep the runway or anything. So we just rolled. And as I was raised by nose wheel, I had to go through this cloud of dust and lost visual reference for about two or three seconds. When I came out, I saw this enormous mister filling my windshield. They were got everyone uh, just ahead of me. And uh, I was about to collide with him. So the mystery had a characteristic. We could, if you unstuck slightly prematurely, yeah, she yawed to the right, which is what I did. I yawed and staggered into the air and cleaned up the aircraft and uh, tried to catch up with the other members of the formation. So I had lost them by that time because they were all flying without our navigation lights. Okay, Jagan, so we heard that, that piece. So Devaya's got airborne there uh, in the you know early hours of the morning. It's almost uh, pitch dark outside. And when these guys land back, uh, Devaya is missing. So can you pick up the threads from there and tell us uh, you know what uh, what we know of at that time? So so Gans, uh, you know uh, that that was a fascinating first person account by Marshal Rajkumar about that uh, particular fateful day. Uh, before going into uh, you know how the uh, battles uh, uh, unveiled itself, uh, let me set some background as to what actually happened on 7 September 1965. What happened during the 65 conflict on prior to this particular day was the previous uh, evening, the Pakistan Air Force opened the uh, opened the uh, uh, floodgates into the uh, into the air war of 1965 by attacking Indian Air Force bases at Patan Court, Atampur, and Halwara. Uh, and that pretty much opened up uh, the floodgates as to how the battle unfolded. Till that time, the air battles and the air war was limited to the state of, you know, the border around Jammu and Kashmir. But afterwards, all operations uh, uh, were, uh, uh, you know, between both the air forces, the counter air operations were, uh, were uh, opened up. The Indian Air Force wanted to send a response by uh, sending several uh, formations to attack the Pakistani stronghold at Sargodha uh, Air Base. And the first opening strike was carried out by number one squadron at Adampur under the command of uh, Wing Commander Omi Taneja. They were, uh, they were flying the Dassault Mister uh, uh, fighter bombers. Um, the Mister, as you know, is, uh, is a sort of a second generation fighter, subsonic, uh, still had those World War II-era centrifugal uh, jet engines. Um, but they were a pretty steady uh, ground attack platform. And the number one squadron essentially earmarked 12 aircraft uh, to fly against Sargoda in three formations of four aircraft each. They were given a time over target uh, quite early in the day. And uh, Taneja also earmarked two additional aircraft are standby. Since they didn't have aircraft uh, available, they borrowed a couple of aircraft from number 32 squadron. And earmarked for the standby aircraft were, uh, you know, AB Devaya and BS Rajay, uh, who were supposed to fly only if something uh, wrong happened with the first formations. Now in that, in, in that early morning during the, uh, what you call, 
uh, there was some confusion because of the bad visibility, the darkness, as well as the uh, dust clouds raised by the bomb debris from the previous uh, night's attack. In the first formation, two aircraft had to drop out, one due to uh, mechanical issues, the other uh, due to navigational problems. So somewhere along the line, the standby aircraft uh, under Devaya took off. He was the only one who took off. Uh, and it, there is, it has left to, uh, to further research whether he was given the uh, command to go fill, fill in the slot or whether he took off on his own account. Uh, and as we know by A. Marshal Rajkumar's account, he very much he pretty much cut the line in front of the second formation, and almost nearly collided with uh, you know uh, A Marshal Rajkumar's aircraft. Um, after after that took off, uh, the third formation that was being led by Kahayev, in which A Marshal Rajkumar was part of, also lost its way. I mean they could not carry out the attack successfully, but the first two aircraft uh, as well as four aircraft of the second formation. And this straggler aircraft flown by uh, uh, squadron leader Devaya were all on their way to attack Sargoda. Now, what happened at Sargoda was uh, perhaps, you know, it is easy for me to say it with the hindsight, but at that time, there was some miscalculation about the time of our target. When the when this first formation arrived, the they did not find the amount of sunlight uh, over the airfield as they expected to be. It was still quite dark. So identifying targets became a challenge for this uh, for the initial formation and the pakistanis in fact you would, you, should, you have to read the pakistani account because they were unable to believe that this formation missed several of the targets that were available on the ground and the reason they missed was it was still too dark uh, maybe if that formation was launched maybe you know 30 minutes later they would have had a field day identifying uh, targets in the sunlight so the the all the aircraft, you know, the first formation of uh, Taneja and his wingman, uh, they attacked a transport aircraft. And as Taneja was pulling up, he saw several aircraft on the ORP. He communicated to his, uh, you know, the second formation of four aircraft. And the second formation uh, weren't able to really successfully attack because, again, because of the darkness, they didn't uh, see the targets. And all the aircraft sort of made its way. At that point, Taneja was unaware that there was a seventh aircraft in the mix. He was only thinking that there were six aircraft uh, that made it to the target. And, you know, another formation of four aircraft probably on the way. And it was only after they came back, uh, you know, the third formation also made its way back. Then they realized that uh, the standby aircraft flown by AB Devaya never came back. And that was the first casualty of the squadron. Uh, he was missing in action. Nobody knew what happened to him. No one has any had any idea what happened to him. Of course, the Pakistanis, uh, in their propaganda accounts, did claim uh, that they had shot down several mistakes, not one, several, uh, over Sargoda. The, the official account went that uh, within the first formation, one mistake was uh, shot down by ACAC fire. And then a starfighter took off, if one of our starfighter took off, piloted by Flight Lieutenant Amjad Hussein Khan of PAF. And he was able to engage uh, two of the missiles and shoot them down in air combat. And at that time, everybody knew on, on Taneja's unit that no one, none of the other six pilots who successfully attacked Sarvuda had seen a starfighter. They did not report any air combat with a starfighter. They did not report getting hit or even being targeted by by an enemy PF aircraft. So it was assumed that Devaya was somehow, uh, you know, he fell a, uh, you know, uh, unfortunate victim of that particular aircraft. Then that was the story that the, that we knew that that we knew for the next, I would say, 13 years, 13, for, uh, 13 or 14 years. What happened after the 65 war was over was uh, Noor Khan was uh, good friends with uh, this British uh, aviation writer by the name John Fricker. John Fricker was, I, I believe at that time, a very prolific uh, writer for some of the leading aviation magazines in UK. He had visited Pakistan in the 1950s, you know, received uh, uh, VIP treatment. He was able to write several articles. Uh, I believe it was for the flight magazine. So Noor Khan saw an opportunity uh, about uh, 
recording everything that they had done in the 65 hours. So he invited John Fricker uh, in his official capacity to come and write history of the PAF's uh, operations in 65. And John Fricker came. He was given complete access to the PAF records, and he he wrote a he wrote a a very detailed but one-sided history of the 1965 air war, and it was all. Uh, written from the Pakistani Air Force perspective, uh, he could have taken the high road and, you know, and sort of written a balanced account that would have given credit to the IAF as, as well. But uh, the book comes out as a as a propaganda piece. Uh, it's very well written and you could tell. Do we know if he approached the Indian Air Force at all? Uh, how we re reacted if, uh, if at all? I do not know. He claims he approached the uh, Indian Air Force uh, at, at that time, but but you know everybody knew that he was he was he was invited by the PF to write the history. So I, if the IF was skeptical about his uh, how he would treat uh, uh, its side of it, I don't blame them. That and I, and another good reason was I mean let's be frank about it. The IF uh, losses from the '65 war were 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 quite high. I mean the Probably we, we made several mistakes. We lost more than half of the aircraft on the ground. So there wasn't much to talk about. Maybe the IAF wouldn't have been too frank about it at that time. And it wasn't, you know, even the story of 65 war took several years before we could write it in detail. So one thing we knew, Fricker was a official invitee of, uh, uh, of the PAF and of course, there's always uh, a feeling that he wouldn't really give a fair, you know, fair shake uh, to our version of events. So, Fricker had full access to the PF records. He he came up with this book. He came up with this draft for Battle for Pakistan, and that book was completed by 1967 or 68. But he they could not locate a publisher for it for several years, um, and several you know a lot of things happened after that. We had another war in 1971, and pretty much that. Manuscript was forgotten. Then in 1978, that book was published by Ian Allen, who was, you know, a publisher in the UK, and uh, and that was the first time that the the whatever work that Fricker had done was published internationally. And since it was published in UK, it received a lot of publicity, especially among the aviation community in UK, which is like probably 100 times uh, uh, larger than uh, what we see in India. The, you know, the aviation history. Or the aviation literature uh, uh, market there, and in that book, uh, he you know he writes the usual PAF claims and everything. But in 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 that book, in that 1978 book, for the first time ever, Fricker writes the story about the mysterious attacking Sargoda and what happened after Ramjad Hussain uh, uh, took off to intercept the uh, the mysterious that were you know making their way back to India. And as for Fricker, Ramjad Hussain. Uh, found the straggler, you know, the straggler uh, aircraft within that Mister uh, formation, and he went and first shot down one Mister with his uh, 20 mm cannon. Then he pursued a second Mister, and uh, uh, Fricker very clearly writes that the second Mister turned into him, and uh, in that particular combat, uh, there was, uh, you know, the Mister was able to turn the tables and mm. shoot him down. Uh, there is, and this this text is like about uh, almost a page followed by another page with pictures and the captions once again reiterate that saying you know one of the but let me pull up the text and read out a little bit. As soon as the mistress were retreating uh, for, uh, uh, after completing their attack on Sargoda, one of the star fighters was already in the air being flown by flight lieutenant Amjad Hussain Khan. Now the Pakistani account is this. Of the mistress that attacked Sargoda, one of them was shot down by Akak fire. Then Amjad Hussain uh, chased these mistress that were, you know, hitting the deck, flying back to India, and he he positioned behind one of the stragglers, and uh, you know, fired a missile. The missile went into the ground because the aircraft were too low; it could not pick it up. Then he chased uh, the mister, you know, engaged after one, chased one down and engaged it with his uh, 20 mm cannon and shot it down. Now, at that point, Fricker writes, a second mister then began to dogfight with the starfighter. 
and what he writes is the mr pilot showed commendable courage and gained an advantage uh, during the dog fight when hussein made the mistake of reducing speed in an attempt to outturn his determined opponent and he says the mr pressed home its attack and scored several cannon strikes on the star fighter and hussein you know found himself in an unresponsive aircraft and he ejected now frika doesn't say hussein shot down this second mr he just says he lost the air combat and the second mr mm-hmm. probably made it back mm-hmm. that's a, that's a story and as i said this account takes about half a page of text then he follows up with another page where with the photographs and captions in which once again he he mentions that among the most credible and least publicized achievements by the af during the 1965 war was the shooting down in air combat of a star fighter by an obsolescent daso mr 4a Wow. Janan, you know, let me pause you uh, and just ask you a question here. Um, so when uh, um, a pilot has returned from a mission uh, in any Air Force, and possibly if you know how the Pakistani Air Force does it, what, what, do, they rec- what do they record? Is there an after-action report that they provide? And where, where, where would these records lie? Or where could Fricker perhaps have accessed these records? That's a good question, uh, Gans. Uh, at least in the Indian Air Force, any pilot who survives will definitely uh, write an after-action sortie report. Uh, usually, formation commanders themselves write uh, what they call the Form 1500s, which details you know so many aircraft in the formation, tail numbers. This is what happened, and definitely a pilot who was engaged in a, uh, who engaged in air combat, whether he scored a kill or was shot down or had to eject. would submit a pretty detailed account of what happened and these would form part of the historical record and i assume the pa would have a similar process and are those reconciled with uh, are those reconciled with the amount of ammunition that's left and if you left with two missiles and came back with one what happened to that one missile or uh, damage assessment of the aircraft if you had you know um, some bullet holes cannon holes mm. Yes, it would all be recorded. Uh, if the aircraft uh, has made it from a combat, how much, how many uh, rounds you have expended, how many missiles you have fired, uh, if you have claimed shooting down an aircraft, do you have such you know uh, uh, evidence uh, towards that? Did you, could your gun camera have captured it? Did a wingman see the aircraft going down? Did someone on the ground, you know, an army formation in the environ, see the aircraft going down? Was there a wreckage? Mm-hmm. you know where the remains you know there a, a lot of investigation will go on uh, after an air combat okay mm-hmm. uh, from the pakistani perspective i am fairly sure amjad hussain would have submitted a, a detailed sort of report uh, and the squadron commander would also have written reports on on the aircraft losses on the aircraft claims the station commander would have uh, written something i am pretty sure there would have been some sort of documentary evidence uh that exists uh, about about the operations and fricker would have had access to these records mm-hmm. okay uh for fact i have seen examples of form 1500s uh from the indian air force from the 71 war i haven't seen uh from the 65 operation but i i believe they have been declassified and you know we, we might uh, find those one of these days um similarly these records should be there it should be existing on the other side too. and uh, i for one would think that fricker had based uh, you know this two pages of text on some of the documents he read so that's that's the version now what happened after this book was published in 78 is slowly uh, copies made itself over to india and our veterans of the 65 war read that book with 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 uh, uh, quite a bit of interest uh, i know for certain you know the doyen of aviation history mr pushpan the late mr pushpan the singh himself uh, read that book and wrote some reviews about it uh, the copy was also read by uh, 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 re- group captain omit taneja who was of course commanding number 1 squadron at that time and omit taneja who led the attack Uh, read these two pages and he immediately realized that sir whichever mr was engaged in combat with starfighter had to be devaya because he was the only loss 
over Sargoda from that morning. You know, he as a uh, squadron commander, he would have uh, debriefed all the pilots in his formation. Nobody mentioned uh, air combat with a starfighter or being engaged by a starfighter. And he immediately deduced it has to be squadron leader Deva. Let me stop you there. So who was shot down by the ACAC and who was shot down by the other starfighter, which, you know, you'd said there were two that were shot down. Right? So, mm. so, he, so here's the thing. That is a Pakistani claim. That is a PAF claim. No aircraft was lost to ACAC over Sargoda. Of all the aircraft that reached Sargoda, only one mixture was lost and that was AB Deva to the starfighter. Got it. Uh -huh. uh, several things were wrong in Frigga's uh, claims. Uh, but again, all the pilots made it back. Uh, nobody, uh, uh, and Devaya was the only mm -hmm. loss from the morning. So, uh, Groupie Ta Taneja immediately connected the dots and he said, squadron leader Devaya is the pilot who shot down the, this, this uh, starfighter. And in April 1980, he wrote a letter to the Air Chief, uh, Air Chief Marshal Latif, uh, saying that uh, he read this book and he immediately uh, you know he sort of recounted his uh, thoughts about it saying none of the pilots reported uh, engagement and he has come to the conclusion that squadron leader deva shot down the star fighter and in the letter he recommended that an award of mahavir chakra be made a posthumous mvc be made to squadron mm -hmm. leader deva and uh, I'm really not sure what happened after that. Pretty maybe that was letter was taken up. Maybe you know some investigation was made, but somewhere around 1988, I believe uh, Air Commodore Pritam Singh was also doing the you know followed up on that particular case. And in 1988, the government of India, eight years after Krupi Tanaja wrote that letter, maybe backed up by further research and uh, whatever evidence uh, the IAF had because they probably would have had to uh, uh, substantiate everything from that letter, right? So eight years after that letter, they finally announced the award of a Mah posthumous Mahavir Chakra to uh, squadron leader A.B. Devaya. And uh, that made the news at that time. And uh, I have a personal connection because I remember reading that article in, in my local newspaper and it captured my imagination you know, as a teenager and, you know, that sort of kick-started my interest in air combat or, AV, you know, air warfare in the Indian subcontinent as well. Do you have the citation handy by any chance? Let me uh, pull that one up. You know, well, one thing I remember about that uh, news article is, I read that news article, Guns, and I, re I read, oh, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fighter called Starfighter and there's a fighter called Mister. I had no idea how each one would each, you know, how they looked like. You're talking about 1988, you know, there were no libraries either. But ultimately, once I found an observer's uh, aircraft handbook, I was fascinated the difference between how how they looked. The mixture looked so like, you know, a stubby second generation fighter and the star fighter is just beautiful. I mean, uh, I might, it might be sacrilege to say, but if you compare a MiG-21 with a star fighter, the star fighter is equivalent to a Spitfire being compared to a hurricane <laughs> um, it's it's so slick and uh you know the wings everything i mean it, it, it's 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 a pretty impressive uh, aircraft That's right. um, coming to the coming to the citation this is what the citation says on 7 september 65 squadron leader devaya was part of a formation of aircraft on a strike mission to the sargoda airfield in pakistan he was the last aircraft of the mission to finish the attack and he was as he was turning away, he was intercepted by an enemy F-104 Starfighter aircraft. After he successfully evaded the missiles launched by the enemy aircraft, his attacker flying a faster aircraft caught up with him and fired his guns, damaging squadron leader Devaya's aircraft. Squadron leader Devaya, displaying true fighting spirit, opted for air combat with a superior enemy aircraft and shot down the attacker. In the process, he made the supreme sacrifice as he probably crashed or was killed. For showing conspicuous ga gallantry in putting the safety of his colleagues before his own and in electing to get into aerial combat with the F-104, even though his aircraft was damaged, squadron leader Devaya displayed valor, valor of the highest order and he was awarded the Mahavir Chakra posthumously. Let's parse that a uh, little bit. 
so the Indian Air Force came up, uh, sort of, uh, came up with its own version, reading Fricker's account. In Fricker's account, the star fighter shot down a mixture, then engaged another mixture in air combat. Mm -hmm. And the IAF interpreted that as, okay, Devas mixture was hit by the star fighter. And he still engaged the star fighter in air combat. And so the, because there were no two mixtures. That Correct. So logically, this is the, the only explanation that makes sense. Yeah. This is the explanation that the IAF arrived at. And, and it is true that if Devaya had not engaged uh, uh, the star fighter and kept him busy, you know, they were, uh, maybe Hussein would have chased the rest of the formation and got another kill. So Devaya could have punched out as soon as the aircraft was damaged, but in engaging with the aircraft, you know, he, he was uh, guarding his uh, colleagues and he also paid, uh, you know, with his life uh, because the ejection would have come too late after that combat. So that, that's the 1988 uh, uh, citation. Yeah, so my personal connection is, uh, you know, there's this photograph of my father and his squadron, 8 squadron in uh, ATW in Jamnagar. And uh, of course, it has him, it has uh, Marshal Jal, Sapre, the Three Musketeers of 66 PC. But at one end, it has this short, uh, you know, very handsome, impish looking gentleman, which is A.B. Devaya. He was in their squadron. And both him and Marshal Jal described Devaya in combat as somebody who would just never let go. He was a fierce dogfighter. They said he's like a dog that gets a. Uh, that is on his hunt of the prey and he will just not be called off you know so i'm this personality wise kind of sounds like him somebody who will not uh, shy from a fight in fact i put this question to a marshal jial so you know the accounts seem to indicate that he was uh, you know the straggler in the formation and when amjad hussein attacked him yeah. Despite oh, his, you know, being slightly damaged, he yeah. instead of punching out, actually turned and engaged, and thereby allowed his squadron mates to get away. Uh, it sounds like that's the sort of person you're describing. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I can believe every bit of the story because that is what we would have pictured him as squadron mates. Uh, in those late 50s and early 60s. Mm. Because in the air, if you are doing a practice combat, there is no way you could you could get him. Uh -huh. Wow. And there was something, the Kurgi spirit in him, I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but right. his confidence in the cockpit and his, you know, his ability in the cockpit and the confidence in himself and the spirit of, I'm, I'm not going to come out the loser, that's for sure. Amazing. <laughs> so I, I believe the story absolutely because I think this is exactly what would have happened. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, at, this, at, this, at that time in 1988, um, I should also give a shout out to an article, a two-page article published in India today, uh, uh, which which pretty much expanded on the Devaya story. Um, I do have a copy of it. If someone could, uh, and I believe there is also a copy of it online. To our readers uh, or uh, podcast listeners yeah, we can look it up. Yeah, put the link with this article. Um, yeah. Yeah. So before the uh, between the 78 and the 1988 IF citation. Uh, the PF also published two histories, two official histories, one in 1982, the other in 1988. Uh, again, don't ask me why they published two back-to-back -back history. There is a story behind that. But the 1982 uh, history sort of walks back on, uh, walks back a little bit on uh, uh, Fricker's account by stating that he Hussein shot down the mystery and then he flew into the debris of the mystery. Mm. Now that's a different uh, version from Fricker's very detailed account. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and Fricker never gave uh, is very he sparingly gives praise, and this is one of the few occasions where he gave praise to the IAF. Um, but the 1982 PF version walks back on that claim, saying Amjad Hussein flew through the debris of the mystery he just destroyed, and he had to eject because his aircraft was damaged. That's that's version number two that the Pakistan Air Force published. Uh, 
then uh, you know of course uh, uh, another thing about the 1988 uh, award for the mahavir chakra is if you look at all the mahavir chakra awards given to the iaf over the years from 1948 62 65 71 there were 20 mbc awards made none of them are posthumous awards so deva is, is the only posthumous mbc award and i would say <sighs> it ranks right up there i mean right next to uh, nirmal jit singh sekon's parambir chakra award and i always felt if the story was actually uh, known during the 65 war because of you know the publicity and and the and the what to call the uh, interest of the public at that time armed forces they were, could well have been nominated for a pvc if the story were, had been understood during the 65 war now almost so many years later it you know an mbc was uh, 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 given and i to me i think it was almost right up there so those are the accounts so you have a fricker account you have a pf history account our own interpretation of what fricker wrote uh, then the story then in 2000 in early 2000 uh, uh, there was a uh, i mean there is a, a pakistan air force officer very well known, he's, he's quite famous now, uh, Air Commodore Kaiser Tufel. At that time, he was a group captain. So group captain, and in fact, you know, by the time his book got published, he, he, he did make uh, make it to Air Commodore. He, uh, so Air Commodore Tufel, uh, being a Pakistani Air Force officer, is also a very uh, devoted aviation history uh, 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 writer. He, he took pains to look at uh, stories from both sides, uh, of uh, you know from both sides and uh, he wrote a book called great air battles of pakistan air force now before that book was published he actually published the entire text on his website it, i believe it was pf and combat .com. and uh, and he referred to accounts on the bharat rakshak website published material um, then he also referred to uh, he also referred to uh, uh, pakistani official records and he he wrote this book in which he uh, covered both uh, uh, stories from 65 as well as uh, 1971. And one of the stories is called it's a chapter called the mystery of the the mystery of the downed starfighter or something like that. Uh, and this book was published in 2005, but again the web version was existing in 2002 or something like that. Uh, what Air Commodore Sufail did was he actually went to the to the site of where this air combat took place he spoke to the villagers on the ground um, and uh, he was he was aware of amjad hussein's uh, version which is i flew into the debris of this mystery he was aware of fricker's account which is the mystery shot down the star fighter then he interviewed some witnesses on the ground and his version is hussein damaged a mystery or hussein got into a scissoring uh, dogfight with a mystery and while both the aircraft were trying to get behind each other uh, they took it to such an extent they they came so close to each other that uh, at one point the star fighter hit the mystery so it was a mid-air collision during air combat hmm. uh, and he bases this on the fact that one of the eyewitnesses on the ground told him aha there were two aircraft and these aircraft were like going against each other it was not one aircraft chasing another and shoot trying to firing guns at each other two aircraft were going in circles against each other and at one point the aircraft firing at gun at the other went and hit that particular aircraft so that was the eyewitness account uh, this version you could probably also understand why amjad hussein thinks oh the aircraft blew up and i flew into the debris because things happened so fast he might have uh, been chasing it and collided with it so that's the version that uh, account of tufel has uh, published uh, hussein ejected unfortunately devaya couldn't and hussein ejected at uh, I, I believe at a low altitude 300 feet uh, above ground so you can imagine uh, the mystery does not have a uh, uh, such a advanced uh, uh, ejection seat that the starfighter had and he probably never had the chance um, 
another fascinating uh, part is uh, you know Commodore Tufel locates the exact crash site of uh, the OS uh, aircraft and uh, based on his account and you know research on police records he also pinpoints where he was buried a apparently he was buried uh, you know uh, on on one of the farmlands where you know where he fell unfortunately it seems that uh, over the years that location has been lost it is it is recorded in some police files but uh, i don't think anybody can locate it on the ground um so but that was fascinating research that he had done i mean it was it was wonderful that he took the time and effort to go to the site of the combat to speak with the survivor the villagers the eyewitnesses there and sort of put this together so here we are uh, almost uh, what to call 50 uh, uh, 57 years after the war we are presented with multiple accounts of the same air combat one Fricker's account which i would believe is based on uh, official reports sorted reports accounts has been told then you have the uh, amjad hussain's account which from his eyes and from what he perceived is that he flew through the debris and of course the uh, air commodore tufel's account uh, where he says it's a mid-air collision the if went with the first version that they got which was Fricker's account and we believe with with good justification that the air did engage the star fighter in combat and shot it down it differs from tufel's account that it was a mid-air collision so whichever account you pick uh, and even if you pick hussein's uh, account uh, Hussein's account also misses, uh, he, he doesn't elaborate, but it is very clear that he was in air combat with that mystery. He was not picking, a, you know, it wasn't a turkey shoot. He was in air combat with that mystery. Whichever account you picked, it is very clear that squadron leader Devaya took on an air, uh, you know, took on the star fighter uh, in an obsolete aircraft. I mean, in terms of capabilities, you cannot, you cannot uh, compare the two. And in doing so, he covered he covered the you know all his squadron squadron members who were who were in a very vulnerable state you know they were at their far far end of the fuel state hitting the ground hitting the deck you know flying back to Adampur. so he protected them uh, whichever version you pick uh, you know what he did was heroic and as as, as the citation said right you know it, the the amount of valor he he displayed is is really commendable um so that's that's where we are with that story amazing amazing now um i'm just hussein tell me what happened to him in 71 uh, we... oh yeah so i'm just hussein uh you know he survived his ejection in 65 and i and and there are accounts uh, yeah, he survived his ejection on 7 september he it didn't take him too many days he was again up in a you know uh, with his squadron he flew several sorties throughout the 65 war he was awarded uh, a sitara a jurat uh, i don't know if i said that right correctly but i believe the star of courage equivalent to our uh, equivalent to our mvc hmm? for the 65 war so he remained with the star fighters uh, squadron in 71 he was a squadron leader at that time and he uh, he once again found himself uh, with the same squadron number nine squadron flying the star fighters and uh, as luck would have it he was flying attack sorties against the Amritsar radar when uh, our ACAC shot you know uh, shot him down and uh, you know the you have on your podcast group captain ajit Akte's uh, account yeah <laughs> of how he was captured you know that's a fascinating uh, so, yeah, yeah, and he still has the uh, his wings, which he ripped off his uh, flight suit. Yes. Um, so Amjad Hussain was actually shot down over Amritsar. He, you know, he he was taken uh, prisoner of war, and uh, subsequently repatriated uh, at the end of the war. And during his time, uh, uh, when he was a prisoner of war, he was uh, interviewed. You know, he was debriefed by his IAF captors, uh, and I vaguely remember reading that he did talk about his 65 uh, account as well. Um, so that's another document we might want to you know, try and find out from MOD archives if we ever, if we ever get to it. Uh, what is the debrief uh, 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 interview uh, with him? 
But let's uh, listen to Group Captain Octa describe that incident. This was on the afternoon of the 5th of December, around 1400 hours. The CEO and I, we had three, sh- sorry, to shift back and forth. We had three shifts of cockpit readiness during the day. It was from 6 to 10, 10 to 2, and 2 to 6. So I was on that 10 to 2 shift. We had finished. The 2 o'clock shift was over. The two people on the, as a pair were my CEO, that's Johnny Green and myself. So he came in the Jeep to pick me up from the pen. I'd handed over. The next guy had gotten into the cockpit. We came out and we were driving towards the mess when we saw two silver specks out on, not on the horizon, but coming straight towards Amritsar. If you look at the map, Lahore to Amritsar, the road railway line is like a straight line. You can actually put a ruler and draw a straight line. That's how straight it is. And we saw these two specks. And as they put on bank, we saw there were two star fighters. And gleaming silver. And uh, as they came closer, they pulled up. And a couple of seconds later, we heard the distinctive vroom of the Vulcan cannon firing firing at the Amritsar radar, which was in the city. They did one pass there, and the Amritsar uh, SU ACAC opened up. We could see the puffs firing. And they continued with the turn, and they came straight over the airfield, and they were must have been doing between five, 450 to 500 knots. And uh, they went over the airfield, and the airfield ACAC opened up. And they both had reheats going on their engines, Suddenly, we saw right above us the reheat of one aircraft go off, trailing black smoke, ejected, inverted, and that aircraft went into the ground. And the pilot's parachute deployed, and he fell just outside the airfield. When I say just outside, it's about 800 yards outside the airfield perimeter. So we were driving to the mess, which was right next to the perimeter fence. So Johnny Green told me, he said, Ajit, go get that guy before the villagers get him. So he he went up to the fence. He lowered one strand of barbed wire with his feet. He pulled the other one out and he said, get out of here. So I got out. But before me, there was one more army infantry jawan because security of the airfield was looked after by the army. He'd already got out and he was running. So I ran after him. So we were sprinting towards the guy. And I was in my overalls and the thoughts that were going through my mind is I said, I hope the villagers don't mistake me for the parking. <laughs> so oh, the guy was falling down as he was going down. He gave one hit on his head. So he collapsed again. We went, picked him up. And as he was getting up, the jeep from the Air Force station came. We picked him up, put him inside. His wing was on his overall with press buttons, you know, ditch buttons. So it was hanging loose with one. So I took it off and I still have that wing. And this was Amzad Hussain. Um, so then subsequently was repatriated back. There's a very lovely photo uh, photo of uh, you would see on the internet uh, with Field Marshal uh, Sam Maneksha. Uh, he was, he he's on this uh, aircraft having, a, you know, sort of a, a conversation with the two PAF uh, pilots being returned as POWs. And one of them is, uh, you know, Amjad Hussain. Uh, the other one was uh, Wajid Ali Khan, if I remember correctly. So there's a, a lovely photograph that uh, one can look up. Uh, then uh, once he returned to uh, PAF, uh, he did uh, rise up to the rank of an Air Vice Marshal, uh, distinguished career and all that. Um, so that pretty much sums up uh, uh, Amjad's uh, career. Fascinating. Uh, amazing, Jagan. Thank you so much for you know sharing all of this. It's just a, a you know wonderful uh, recounting of the experience, and I think we all should just salute uh, all of, all the participants, particularly Scott Lee Devaya for his for his bravery, and which was recognized by that embassy. Definitely, Guns. I'm very glad to uh, revisit the Air War of 1965. Uh, I really had a blast going through uh, you know all the uh, accounts and the uh, and and the published uh, stories around this uh, great talking to you on this well folks that's all we have time for this week 
Join us again next week. In the meantime, sign up for updates at blueskiespodcast.com. There you'll find links to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. You can also write to us with your comments, questions, suggestions and feedback from the website or to blueskies at prganapati.com. Subscribe to the podcast on any podcasting platform such as Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and even on YouTube. If you like what you heard, share it with your friends, give us a rating in your favorite podcasting app and write us a review. It will help other people find us. I want to give my thanks to Saurav Chaudhary for our logo and Prithvik for the music. I want to reiterate that all the views expressed here are personal and this podcast has not been approved by or reviewed by the Air Force, Ministry of Defense or any branch of the government. In the meantime, stay safe and Jai Hind.